Thank you for joining me on this panel discussion on taking Indian food out into the world. I'm so happy to have with us two eminent chefs who have given Desi Kana its place in the world. And I know we can't wait to hear of their experiences and learnings on their food journeys. Let me begin by introducing my guest. Award-winning celebrity chef Kunal Kapoor is known for his restaurants, television shows, and for taking Indian food out into the highest levels of diplomacy. He has had the opportunity to present Satvik cuisine to German Chancellor Angela Merkel and cooked for 42 first ladies at the Indian Africa Summit. He also conducted an interactive cooking session for them. He has a whole slew of television shows to his name, including MasterChef India and Junior MasterChef India. But the one we're particularly interested in today is Foodie Goes to America. Welcome, Kunal. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Chef Saransh Goyla is also known as the Sadak Chef because he's traveled 20,000 kilometers to discover Indian food for his food travelogue, India on my platter. And he has had his own television show, Roti Rasta or India. Founder of Goyla Butter Chicken in 2016, he shot into even greater prominence in 2018 when contestants on MasterChef in uh, Australia had to cook his version of butter chicken. For all those who missed the grand announcement, last month Goyla Butter Chicken has been launched in London. Welcome, Saranj. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me over. I'm going to now request you to show us your t-shirt because I know oh. that that's really nice. So I, yes. <laughs> Yep, so he's all ready for this festive season and I particularly thank you guys because I know this is a really busy time and oh, you've yeah. made the time to come and join us on this panel discussion. So now Kunal, you've had a lot of experience of showcasing Indian food abroad, whether in restaurants like the fine dining Patiala by Kunal Kapoor in Dubai or via specialty Indian cuisine menus for first and business class flyers on Lufthansa. You've even done a culinary drive through Australia. What do you keep in mind when you're putting together these showcases of Indian food in order to present the best, the you know, best present this cuisine to the world? I think uh, there is a certain notion with Indian food wherever you travel around the world. And uh, there are these key star uh, dishes that people kind of pick up and uh, kind of uh, encompass the entire cuisine of India. For example, uh, a naan bread or a butter chicken or a, a let's say biryani. Uh, pretty much kind of, or, a, a, you know, randomly thrown the word curry with any ingredient, whether it's a potato curry or a chicken curry or a chicken and potato curry or a meat curry. Uh, that, unfortunately, uh, in most places, not every place, but in most places, that's the recall for Indian food. And uh, beyond the point, it becomes a little uh, difficult to try and explain. So I think uh, having uh, your uh, your restaurant or let's say a pop-up or a healthy discussion or a cookout kind of opens up people's perspective and minds towards Indian food. So my uh, latest restaurant, which is, when I say latest, is all, already two years old, is Namak, which is in Abu Dhabi, where we do uh, small uh, plates of food, which are very um, uh, well-researched. Uh, you know, it's not a curry. It's basically curry out onto a plate. Uh, very interesting combinations and that kind of sparks that, uh, you know, that uh, debate in a lot of people's mind who are uh, not very familiar with Indian food that, oh my God, I never thought Indian food could be this or Indian food could be that. And I think thanks to a lot of uh, yoga, uh, the, uh, the, the, the attention for a lot of people or the normal questions that people have started asking is about Ayurveda because they were interested in yoga. And through yoga, they also discovered there's something called Ayurveda. And Ayurveda, you know, to a common layman, whether it's who is in India or outside of India, is not very simple. So there is always a question around Ayurveda and uh, around the holistic living and the ideology behind Indian food. So there is always um, lot, lots of questions, but very little time. So I think a step-by-step -step, uh, in that direction, uh, you know, Educating people at some places and uh, surprising people with some great Indian meal is uh, one of my ways of trying to communicate or talk Indian food to the world. Yeah, I like, I like what you said about both educating and surprising because I feel that really in all the discussions I've also had that everybody first wants the classics 
and then you sort of surprise them with other things because otherwise, uh, you know, the list that comes in usually does include the things that you spoke of, like the naan or the butter chicken or whatever. And then you sort of have a chance once you have them there to give them, you know, a lot more. So that's that's a great insight about surprising them. So Sarash, the yep. episode in which you were the guest judge on MasterChef Australia, um, and the con contestants had to prepare your butter chicken. That was a proud moment, not just for you, but for all of us in India. So, <laughs> and now, of course, um, you've taken your Goyla butter chicken and, of course, butter paneer to London. You must be so excited. I'm sure this is a long-held dream coming through. And we'd love Absolutely. to share some of your excitement. So, tell us I think about uh, for for being a homegrown brand and to travel from Mumbai to London uh, is is I think a dream for any entrepreneur uh, or FNB professional uh, because some things you write on your uh, diary uh, goals and you know you you set your set yourself some be benchmarks and then if you're actually able to do it um, I think um, it really uh, definitely is a very very proud feeling. Uh, also, to be able to do it in 2020 is um, is uh, quite was quite a task. Uh, um, we we've, we've learned the ways of the new world, and which meant training chefs uh, virtually, uh, trying to take them through the process of cooking Indian um, recipes, um, uh, trying to make make them understand that what kind of detailing it takes uh, to get. Uh, Indian dish, right? As Chef Kunal rightly pointed out that we are usually labeled as sort of a curry, right? And uh, a lot of people just look at curry like curry. Um, the kind of detailing that goes into it or what makes it different? What makes a certain kind of curry, um, let's say that's cooked in Maharashtra, different from what's cooked in Kerala or what's cooked in um, Tamil Nadu. So, so I think that differentiation uh, is difficult to spell out uh, for the Western community. And I think that was the biggest challenge to train chefs there um, and make them understand the basic um, structure of, mm -hmm. of, let's say, building a curry or understanding it that not everything is, you, you sort of put 10 spices together and, and you know, mm -hmm. you, you make a nice curry out of it. I think um, there's a process and thought behind every dish. And I think that's the reason... Um, Goila Bara Chicken as a story and as a product, um, it works because we've taken a internationally recognized and popular Indian favorite. It's, it's mm. technically a no-brainer. It's Bara Chicken. Everybody knows about it. Uh, but very few people um, make it, I won't say correctly, but, but do it justice uh, to say so. So, uh, and I think that always happens with the most favorite uh, dishes of any cuisine. Uh, if, you, if you look at uh, Italy, it's pasta and pizza. If you look at America, you think of steaks and burgers. And I think every cuisine has their uh, favorites. Yeah. But the, the more popular the dish, uh, I think it's tougher to find uh, good versions of it because we all uh, have so many places and options to choose from. Uh, so I think Goila Bara Chicken is a part of that journey. We want to reinvent uh, the popular dishes, uh, the Indian popular dishes and sort of uh, um, find way back to what it used to be or, or how the journey of that dish started and add our own spin on it. So I think it's been, it's been fascinating. Um, I'm hoping that uh, our, butter, our version of butter chicken is loved in UK and chicken tikka masala can now be changed to butter chicken. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think the time has come. Yeah, the time is really come. Saranj, good luck ex trying. Saranj, good luck trying to explain Gora's difference between yeah, chicken yeah. tikka masala, butter chicken, and mur <laughs> makhani. That'll be a big, big, That's big a whole different problem. campaign. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So both, Thanks. both of you have really worked to put the spotlight on Indian food out in the world. Kunal, you had your television series, Poor, Foodie Comes to America, exploring the journey of Indian food in the USA. And Saranj, you've been quoted as saying that we need to learn so much more about Indian food ourselves before we show it out into the world. So what do you think for each of you has been the personal blueprint for when you set out to showcase Indian food? I mean, some of it has already come out in your answers, but do you have like a plan and this is going to be how you do it? Chef, you I think 
Yeah, go ahead, sir. No, no, I, I think you can take it forward and then I'll, I'll pitch in. Okay. So I think uh, I, I personally don't have a plan that this is how I would be doing or should be doing. Uh, I think food has its own way of uh, uh, coming out in the open if one is passionate enough about it. So if I, as an individual, not in just the capacity of a chef, uh, I'm passionate about few things, whether it's about researching something uh, new, whether it is about uh, talking about something new, whether it's talking about a trend or creating awareness about a product or a ingredient, for example, uh, I think uh, that has the capacity to, uh, in the right context, go viral with people in a very positive way and create the right noise and urge people to kind of search it out, look out for what has been said or what has been shown. And that kind of catches on if it is in a, done in a, a really positive way, you know, it kind of grows. Um, it's a simple example uh, during the lockdown because of immunity boosting ingredients, for example, yeah. uh, it's it's about uh, uh, people looking out because there was a need. Now there was a need, you show them or showcase them a product or a, a, a recipe that can be driven by that. Uh, people are ready to pick it up, buy. And from what I understand that uh, anything that is touted as immunity booster has just become a big, big rage in terms of people actually trying it out for the first time. For example, uh, I'll give you a, a very interesting example. So where I live, uh, you know, the moment I would drive my car out, and this is, let's say, before the pandemic, we have this traffic uh, signal, right? And there is this weird, wild uh, weed uh, that when I say weed, it's like not a weed weed, but uh, the wild, let's say, a plant that grows. Yeah. It's like a creeper. And it would cover the entire traffic signal and every now and then you know you would have trouble because you're standing there and you know you couldn't see whether it's uh, your signal is red or green oh. and you know nobody would cut nobody would take care of it it would just grow wild and then it just grows everywhere and it looked like what the hell is this comes lockdown and giloi is something which people are talking about which is which is very much from india which had healing properties and I figured out, because I started reading about Giloy, that this particular planter is Giloy. I go out, there are 10 people cutting it, chopping it, taking it home and making something out of it, whether a kada or whether a tea. And there goes. So I think it's just about matter of awareness that once you showcase the right thing in the right light, things get picked up. Yeah. So uh, my endeavor would be to kind of keep continuing what I do and uh, Mostly, you know, in, in this pandemic also, what I've tried to do is research a lot on uh, local ingredients. That's always been something that has been close to my heart that I enjoy doing. So my last travel to Uttarakhand was about the same, uh, looking for uh, a new seed that I found, which is called Bagheera, which is a very close cousin of uh, uh, what uh, hemp seeds are. And uh, they are much more nutritious. They don't have any psychotropic uh, effects. Uh, they have been locally consumed for a, over a very long time. Uh, you can uh, obviously use it in food. You can give it to kids. You can uh, make oil. You can make multiple things. Mm -hmm. So just the sheer uh, information that, hey, there is something out there and uh, it's right there, growing there wild and all you need to do is take care of it and collect it and grow it and use it is a good way to start uh, before yeah. the travel actually kind of opens up in a big way. Yeah. Very interesting. That, that's a great anecdote, the one about the traffic signal and the and the herb that everybody is using. And what what do you think, Saranj? In this, do you have I think with, to take a leaf out of what uh, Chef Kunal has said? Literally, uh, is that uh, I think to deep dive um, into our own cuisine um, uh, uh, is very important for any chef who actually wants to. Um, you know, guide the world as to what Indian food is all about. Um, and uh, I think that requires a fair amount of self-discovery uh, and exploration um, as chefs as well. I, I always tell uh, my fellow friends, uh, restaurateurs um, and chefs uh, to travel India and travel yeah. uh, to, to cities that we've not seen earlier, to, to regions that we've not been earlier because every 200 kilometers in our country, um, the kind of spices we have, the kind of techniques we use, 
um we might be making the same dal rice everywhere but it's still different and the reason for that could be the soil could be the temperature could be the spices that we are using um i i recently um started doing this uh, series online called 74 dishes of india while it's not really deep diving into a particular region um it's really just on the surface of each state but the idea was to for me to learn as a chef where i have been uh, crowd sourcing recipes um knowledge from people of that region um uh, chef just spoke about the hemp seeds alternate alternative that is available i did not know this 3 months uh, back like 3 months back i learned about this and it's so surprising right i am a indian chef i i'm i'm 33 years old now and the fact that i don't know about half the herbs or spices that are actually available uh, to us to actually use um in our restaurants um and then i want to propagate indian food to the globe so i think um there is a fair part of it is first us learning as chefs and then taking it across the globe i think we all have also realized that um uh, meaningful content online does travel um uh, old school format necessarily don't work anymore or they do work in their own space but i think the the way of the new world is that people are looking for new information people are willing to uh, learn new things and i think we have a great window here to actually promote indian food for what it is um and i think um, i absolutely agree with chef kunal and as a chef i would also follow a similar sort of uh, journey in promoting indian food yeah i think i think what comes to actually is how much potential there still is i mean both of you are very into discovering new you know dishes new ingredients and all and if you still discover things it's i mean the potential and the opportunity and excitement is so great so i mean you know uh, i think it's amazing um let me go on to my next kunal you've done a lot of shows that combine food with travel so have you actually yeah. but what have your greatest learnings been when you when you go out to sort of film these how do those experiences of world cuisine sort of inform the the indian food that you sort of come back and work on if at all sorry i didn't get the last part sorry so when you go out and you learn more about uh, world cuisines and think where where you're traveling out there how does it sort of inform the food that you then sort of present again indian food or otherwise uh, okay so uh, somebody once asked me that uh, uh, which is the best college i can do i have finished my hotel management i want to go for further studies and you know do masters and uh, go to france possibly and uh, and get enrolled in the best culinary program there i want to learn more i said uh, seems like you have money to spend for another 2 2 3 years in college he said of course i said just start traveling so it's like how is that going to help well that's your biggest teacher he said it's an expense useless expense what will i get i won't get a degree i won't get any certification nothing well that's the thing that's how you, people see people see travel as an expense i see it's an investment especially if you are a chef uh, it's a it's a big investment and you don't need a curriculum um, to guide you what to do it's very simple you go to a place try out the food look at the market the spice market the vegetable market talk to people meet chefs uh eat out uh, the biggest problem is that we are being served a version of food and we because we have been served that version of food ever since we were kids we think that's the that's the truth and that's how things are done that's not the case for example uh growing up a punjabi kid in delhi uh dosa and sambar mm-hmm. idli vada meant this was in totality the south indian food till date a lot of people think that besides this there is not much to uh, uh, south indian food it's only when i first traveled i discovered the sambar that i'm eating the way i pronounce dosa and not dosa to so many other things uh, yeah. are absolutely completely different similarly yeah. when you travel around the world or whenever you travel even step out of your city or even if you were to explore your own city that'll be brilliant because there is so much of treasure right there in terms of you learning as a culinary student uh and then you know passing that information or using that information uh in your restaurants 
you know the the simple thumb rule is if you know something that nobody else knows it's gold as a chef for example if i know a certain ingredient which is new which is tasty which is interesting which can be twisted turned into made into an experience in a meal i'm sitting on gold because then nobody has that and in food all of us are looking for we look for our comfort food at the end of the day but we are also looking out what can i try next where should i go who is doing different what is he doing what is she doing what is that i've never heard of that oh my god let me go and give it a try so you know the best is that when you travel you absorb a few things uh you come back and as a chef or as somebody who is a very curious mind you don't have to sit down and do a lot of uh, research you just have to start using your and it automatically kicks in for chefs and sharan will agree with me aaj main aapko ek ingredient deta hu automatically your brain is already subconsciously consciously thinking where all can i use this okay if there is a new leaf that you've got it's a herb i can use it in a bread maybe on a naan maybe in my curry maybe in my tea maybe in my dessert maybe this maybe that i can dry it i can make it into a paste i can um, uh, add it to the juice i can serve it for breakfast so it it is just automatic so the more you travel the more you get inspired the more you become creative on your own you don't need to go to a college or a special institute to get creative you just need to travel be open wow sanjay so you have lots to say to add to the travel aspect of that and we'll learn from that together i think travel is definitely uh, uh, the best teacher i think my inspiration to travel for food first started um, when i saw, when i so anthony bodin's uh, show mm-hmm. and i think he's is pretty le- legendary and anybody who loves travel and food um, looks looks up to him or has uh, been a part of uh, his journey and i think what i noticed from all his conversations was that food has a cultural impact and um, how how closely tied up a city is with food and culture and i think that's that's a sort of approach that i started taking when i started traveling and um, typically when i was in australia or uh, i was in uk these are the two countries that have really tra- uh, traveled in depth so uh, what i what i learned was that uh, a lot of chefs um, they they take care of uh, their cuisine by taking care of produce they're connected to farmers mm-hmm. they're connected to the land and um, i think that is something that i uh, i definitely took a lot of um, influence uh, from that i, I learned that uh, chefs initiate responsibilities to also look after the the supply chain uh, to say so to to see where the food is coming from where the grain is coming from uh, and then leader how are you processing it so i think travel definitely um, has a given me great contacts across the globe i'm connected to a lot of chefs uh, online uh, the fact that you can travel just on social media these days by following chefs from different countries i think it's it's is the is the boon of social media in a way that um, even in lockdown uh, in a world where we can't travel anymore for the next year or so uh, we can still travel by by people's feeds and their pages and i think every time uh, i actually like following chefs from different parts of the world because you get to learn something new from each uh, person and then if you start applying those uh, learnings or you start thinking of your cuisine from what you saw on their feeds and they do that they do the same i think biggest chefs in the world uh, now follow chefs from different regions like i was so surprised for the first time and i saw a chef like rene redzepi who is probably the most well respected renowned mm. chef uh, in the world follows multiple indian chefs he mm. he mm. um and it shows that uh, even at his stature he is willing to learn more and he is willing to sort of expand his horizon as a chef and i think that is what really travel teaches you that uh, what you know is still only so much and there is so much more that you can take in through travel and um, i think it is it is really helped me uh, to look at my own cuisine and my own style of cooking uh, over the last 10 years and also i will never forget um, in fact the first time i got like my um 
break in this industry of food and travel shows uh, was uh, through giving an audition, which was done by Chef Rakesh Sethi. He used to be uh, an iconic host of the show called Mirch Masala on Star Plus back in the day. And he told me that, um, you know, uh, if I have to look back on my career, if there's one thing that I would change about it is that I would want to learn more as I was growing up as a chef. And um, he said, that's my only advice to you that never forget that you have to keep evolving and keep learning. So I think I, it stays with me, what he told me, and I, I love to follow that. No, I think what you're right. The lockdown has given us that chance of cross-pollination of, you know, food ideas and culinary influences from across the world. You're learning much more even within the, for, for chefs, and I'm sure this is true for both of you. What we might have seen before was what you wanted to put out, like in a more formal way. But in the lockdown, we learned about so much about your personal preferences, your ways of doing things, what is cooked in your house your mother, you know, I mean, different, different aspects, which sort of unite us so beautifully in a world of food. So I think that is one of the unexpected uh, great privileges of the lockdown. So, you know, great. So now I want to hear about your plans for the future. I know that uh, Saransh, it's your dream to showcase authentic Indian flavors to the world. So what's next in the, in your the pipeline for your plan? Uh, um, I think one thing that I that's on the top of my list is, of course, to uh, carry on with the Goila Butter Chicken journey, uh, to take it. Uh, we, we've gone to UK. If you're successful uh, in, in our expansion there, we then want to take it to US. We want to take it to mm -hmm. Australia. We wanted to take it to Dubai. As in as many uh, countries or cities that we can take it to. And I think that opens a lot of doors and gateways for me to then... Um, also uh, showcase uh, the things that I do uh, in India uh, by traveling, uh, by meeting street artisans. I, I do this thing called Sadak Chef, um, yeah. which, um, which I really believe in, uh, which is to capture uh, what the street food artists do um, in our country and showcase that uh, to the world. It, it's uh, typically, again, an exercise to... Um, to sort of learn from, you know, Indian food is uh, sometimes also a lot of our dishes are born out of necessity. And I think that that is um, very, very inherent to our food, that it, it depends on geography, it depends on why is this uh, dish being made for yeah. breakfast or lunch or dinner. And I think I want to really capture that and showcase uh, to the world. So I think both these are sort of going in hand in hand. So um, the plan for the next couple of years looks like take GBC um, uh, to another, at least two countries and uh, to grow it to another four cities in India and at the same time keep doing Sadak Chefs. Amazing. All the very best with that. And Kunal, what are your plans as we go forward? Uh, I, I'm not much of a planner when it comes to what I need to do or what I want to do. Um, I've never planned that okay, this is what I want and this is where it will be and that's how I'll go after it. it. Things have just kind of come to me and if I've wanted to do something, I've picked it up. So for me, I don't do anything that I don't enjoy doing. So there are yeah. these things that make sense. You know, it makes either business sense or a PR sense that you should do this and tick off. I don't want to do that. I do things that make me happy. So uh, for me, I don't know what 2021 I want to do. There are a few interests or inclinations that I have. If things work out there, maybe. If not, I'll find out something or the other. Yeah. Rest assured, food is something that, that will keep me on, whether it's social media, whether it's a restaurant that I do, that'll be there. But there is still, there is this, this you know, bit of void where I don't know what I want to do for 2021 specifically. Uh, something that will make me happy. Yeah, I know there is one, if I can mention, which is to learn pottery, how to make pottery, which I had to join last year, which I couldn't. I don't know if I can do that right now or not. So that's one of my interests that I want to get involved in making ceramic wear by myself. So I'll have to kind of figure that out. How will that happen con considering the situation that we're in? So for me, things have come to me. And if I've liked them, I've done them. If not, 
I've let them be. That sounds a really nice way of going through life without too much stress. Yeah. Because I know that there, there is inherent stress in what you guys do. So, I mean, I'm sure this way of actually going with the flow helps tremendously. And I hope your 2021 will be great for both of you um, in whatever you choose to do. One big last question before we go towards the end. Over the years, of course, Indian food has become increasingly significant on the world food scene. What are your thoughts on the way forward for Indian food? And what do you think the highlights will be? And if anything, is there something that we must guard against? I think uh, <clears throat> Indian food, if you see, is, if I can say it confidently, that is one of the most difficult cuisines to prepare simply because of the sheer number of ingredients that go in. And when I say it's difficult to prepare in comparison to other cuisines of the world, even the most sought after French food, uh, which has been well documented, is still easier to do versus Indian food. Uh, because you need a bit of practice of understanding so many ingredients in one dish. So it kind of uh, becomes a bit of a challenge. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, going forward, uh, I feel that with Indian food, there is a whole lot of intrigue. There's a whole newfound love from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But what is missing is, uh, I think, the sheer passion uh, uh, by a lot of people of talking about Indian food as mainstream. So for a lot of Indians, Indian food is not something that they look out to when they go out to eat. Not because they keep eating Indian food at home. That's, that's a farce because what we eat at home is not what we eat at, in the restaurant. Basically, what you cook at the restaurant, you don't cook at home. You don't eat a tandoori chicken or a naan roti or a lachha parantha or a paneer makhni at home. You always go out. It's a restaurant-driven food. I think the top of our minds is not Indian food sometimes. Uh, also, if you look at it, um, food tourism is something that I think is inherently missing with us. We have a huge potential. We have a huge uh, market, domestic and international, where there could be certain hubs made into every city which promotes local food. So that as an individual, whether I'm traveling to MP or Kashmir or to wherever, I know there are these hubs where I can go and try out the food. So right now it's very, it's all over the place. It's segregated. But there is no one place that you know, you can go in every city where there is a hub of that particular community or that particular state's food. Uh, Southeast Asia, if you look at it, uh, most of the uh, Southeast Asian countries, food is their economy, literally. Tourism and food, where street food is of a different level altogether. That even though somebody who wants to go to a five-star does not mind sitting on a plastic chair there and eating food because it's clean, it's made fresh. Uh, it's yeah. in front of them. And there is this entire spread that you would not even get in the best of hotels. So for me, I think uh, one thing that I would wish that changes or uh, should happen is that every city should have a food hub uh, yeah. which represents their local food, uh, which should be as easily ac accessible. It should be much cheaper because over the years, Though, uh, I, you know, I, uh, I'm a chef and, you know, if I'm working for a restaurant, I would charge a certain price, but food is getting expensive. Uh, when I say food, it's not the raw material, it's the, um, uh, the ready dish. And I yeah. so wish that this could just see a reverse trend where food becomes more affordable so that more and more people come and eat. So maybe in larger establishments, uh, business-wise, it doesn't make sense, but uh, uh, on, 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 let's say, a nicer street uh, level, if food could be clean, hygienic, um, and cheap, there's nothing uh, great than uh, having some uh, great meal in, in, you know, in, in that way, in that fashion. So that's one of my, I think, missing links or my suggestions uh, that where we could as a community can kind of improve or con contribute. An amazing idea because when I was in Italy, I know in Florence and in Rome, I went to these things I think called the Mercat Central, mm. you know, where mm. all the big restaurants give just three dishes, but people can go mm. there, sit, you have your beer, you have your wine, and you, you're eating truffle risotto, which you would never probably the average person traveling won't go into a big restaurant and eat. 
and you know the mm. best pasta just their main things somebody mans a counter and it's amazing you're right that's where i had tripe sandwiches in uh, mm. i would perhaps otherwise miss out on a whole lot of things and because all of them are together you can pick and choose mm. different people in the group traveling with you so it's an amazing idea chef you must make it happen <laughs> yeah yeah and the best part is that it, it's affordable you know yeah. and food needs to be tasty healthy and affordable you know not all the time it could be so exclusive yeah. whether you are uh, you know getting your food delivered at home or whether you're dining out like delhi it's become very expensive so it's not about affordability it's about me being the chef i understand uh, the the cost involved sometimes and yeah. i understand sometimes it feels like hey it's just overcharged yeah. i mean it shouldn't be that the more accessible you make i feel because india is a game of numbers the more accessible you make it uh, the more numbers you play with business wise also it makes sense and it gives you a proper growth to uh, a growth channel for everybody then then it's not an exclusive exclusive because food mein kisi ki exclusivity nahi ho bhi nahi sakti you know yeah. food is everybody's uh, domain So. If I could just bring in a parallel, I was recently reading Masaba Gupta talking about how her fashion, even though it's different, is very you know accessible. And she says, "What's the use if everyone wants a wants a piece of you and they can't have it? It doesn't help anybody mm. in the end." You know, especially as you said mm. in India, when there is so much potential, it can be a little more expensive than your average. But it certainly, I, I'm sure, as chefs also, you want people to eat your food. you don't want it to become so exclusive that people can't think of it as a great experience when they were able to get you know a small part of it so i mean it's an amazing idea absolutely saransh your thoughts on the future the way forward i think uh, one thing that chef kunal pointed out food tourism uh, i whole heartedly agree on the fact that we definitely need to uh take care of our cuisines uh exposure and well-being in that in, in that way food tourism on a government's uh list of tourism agendas comes on some number 8 or number 9 mm-hmm. and i feel that's a big shame for us because we with such rich culture and heritage ayurveda yeah. um the fact that food tourism comes on number 7 or number 8 um i think it should be definitely in the top 3 things or yeah. tourism pillars that we have um it it uh, not only will and that will require a lot of things uh, it will require infrastructure it might require a lot of funding it will require organization on our behalf uh, uh, clearly we are not at par with other southeast asian countries when it comes to all these things so we have a long way to go and and that's the truth there's a reason why japanese and um you know uh, chinese food has traveled all across the globe whereas uh, indian food is still curry and not made by indians so there is a large gap um, in that sector where uh, a we need to show ownership of our cuisine we need uh, people who can carry our lineage to different parts of the globe um i know of a lot of young indians who want to go and study outside but then they come back uh, to india and i think we are also people who are bound to our families in a way our culture is slightly different so um, i usually hear a lot of people complain that we don't want to hire indian chef because wo chhod ke wapas chale jayenge and i think that's another thing that needs to really change um, in a way where either our cuisine and and chef kunal Uh, rightly pointed out is is tough to cook so techniques are difficult so it is difficult to train uh, a chef from another community uh, about our cooking it takes and i have recently learned it with goila bada chickens expansion yeah. there is not a single indian chef who is actually cooking our food in london uh, it's all british chefs who are cooking it and british. while it has taken some time i think if you're able to document indian food in a way where others can cook it i think it will travel faster that's also yeah. another another thing that we need to learn as indian chefs we need to share knowledge and i think social media is a big part of that um, and uh, i think more and more people need to share what indian food really is what are our recipes how do you actually cook these things or dishes and the more it happens the more viral it sort of gets yeah. the exposure will be more and i think then we will see interest 
in actually building small communities across the globe uh, who can act, who can really promote indian food yeah. and showcase uh, uh, what our cuisine really is and it's not just butter chicken and curry so there's lots more to it true true very insightful this last question has been so thank you we're going to just move into the last part i'm going to have like a rapid fire uh, i will first ask you sarash and then you kunal for each question so my first question to you is what is your favorite indian dish to serve anyone across the world oh uh, i i won't say butter chicken here because i think it's slightly obvious uh, i think favorite dish to cook for me for others is uh, sindhi kadhi uh and matar wale chawal because it's something that showcases my lineage um yeah. and it's also uh something i'm really passionate about um so yeah that's my choice of dish nice and kunal uh it'll be a chaat i think it's complex it's a no brainer it's always tasty nice nice okay so if you had to choose indian vegetarian or indian non vegetarian what would it be Sarish I think I would uh, pick on to Indian vegetarian I belong to a vegetarian family I was born and brought up a vegetarian and most of my meals are still vegetarian and um, yeah I think I would just and, and the produce we have is just brilliant so I I I'd, I'd pick on to the Indian vegetarian side okay. which sounds wrong I I run a butter chicken venture That's fine <laughs> There's no right or wrong they're just interesting nuances to people knowing you through your answers so that's great and kunal i think uh, a bit of both i clearly cannot distinguish that and kind of draw a line and say this is uh, what i like and this is what i don't like personally i enjoy eating vegetarian more but uh, when it comes to cuisine i think there are both sides to it and uh, it will be unfair it will be incomplete rather that if yeah. one is showcased with the absence of other absolutely okay now one indian dish you can't handle that can you don't like at all or can you don't like making saraj uh, i think uh, I, th- there is there isn't a dish that's really thrown me off i've i've traveled a lot across india and my my mom if you ever spoke to her she'll tell you that she when i was growing up she was very proud of the fact that i would eat everything on my plate Wow. Um I was one you of those mom, kids. Very few moms can say that. <laughs> Biba Munda. <laughs> <laughs> so I I honestly believe that nothing is thrown me off. Yes. Um for um I I took some time to uh tone my palate for northeastern food especially the fermented um uh, uh dishes there but uh, now I have such fo- I like I like them so much and I have such fondness for na- naga cuisine mm-hmm. and um, even assamese food yeah. that that uh, i i cook it often as well at home um i uh, but i yes it i will be honest to say that it took me a couple of uh, tries to adjust to it if if that's what we are speaking about good enough kunal i think uh, i think for me handling andhra chili food Mm. has been very difficult like there have been instances that i've had uh, a, a specifically rail seema style of food i've had like two bites and i was like i, I had to refuse like i i'm so sorry i cannot eat this because it's way too spicy for me to understand anything and right now excuse me i have to need to rush go to the washroom and just wash my face it's <laughs> so spicy where i see a lot of localized just relishing that food which is great i don't know how they handle it but uh, extremely spicy food throws me off so uh, i still cannot handle that oh okay that's good to know now i'm going to ask you kunal if you had to serve saransh one indian dish what would it be and why do you choose that for him i think i will serve him uh, mere ghar ka khana especially what my mom cooks reason being one he hasn't tasted what my mom cooks and second you have to really taste what my mom cooks because um uh, everything is cooked in desi ghee so mm-hmm. i belong to family nobody is a doctor but everybody is a doctor because they all know what is right to eat and what is when to eat and how to eat and blah 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 but it all boils down to overeating and lot of desi ghee so you should meet <laughs> them and definitely have a meal so you're in yeah, for a treat 
Sorry. Yeah, I am definitely taking this offer, and uh, <laughs> he on anything for me just does it. So I am fully, <laughs> fully up for this. Okay. And now from you, Sarash, what would you choose to serve Konal, and why? Uh, I, I've already served him butter chicken, so that part of the story is done. Uh, so I would actually because he definitely has a, a, a great liking for charts. So at um, at home we um, uh, use the seasonal green uh, called bathua, and just how we make palak uh, patte ki chaat, um, we make uh, bathua ki chaat. And that is something that I would uh, love to feed Chef Kunal because I think he will really savor it. It touches all his sweet spots, uh, local greens and uh, a local chaat. So that is what I would serve him. Sounds interesting. But three ki chaat I have not heard. But now that you're saying, okay, good. Let's see. Yeah. I'm feeling right. a bit left out at this point, but fine. Yeah. <laughs> My question both. to you is: Do you know what Bathua is? Because that's a very, <laughs> yeah. if you're not from, I've, if you're from I've Bombay, you would know. It. I've heard of it, but of course, I have not tasted it. So maybe I will also okay. get in on this action at some point. Yeah. But anyway, let's go to our last big question, not big, but interesting question. So both of you have each been made the master of the food universe. Okay. So that gives you special powers, obviously. You can change anything you want. You can add anything you want because you are the master of the food universe. So let's start with you, Saranj. What would your first action be? Oh, um, you know what? I, if, if I was made master of the food universe, uh, I would close just... down all competition of Goila butter chicken. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Good one also. Yeah, I think uh, from an entrepreneur's perspective, absolutely, I would, I would uh, totally do that. Um, <laughs> but you know, if if I was really made uh, master of the food universe, um, I would just um, make uh, Indian food uh, more approachable to everybody. I think that's what I would love to do. I would uh, uh, want to add arms and legs to our cuisine. Uh, uh, in a way that we don't have it right now. I would, I would want to document some. I don't know if there's a recipe limit to it. Ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand recipes that really define our cuisine. Uh, in college, it was funny because we were taught all sort of uh, culinary is is the book that we would all refer to France, Italy, all of that. But India does not have a yeah. manual or a book that can really define. Mm. Uh, our food. So I, I, if I really had a magic wand, that is something I would like to pull off. We hope that you get that. <laughs> yeah, maybe next tomorrow morning, miraculously, when you make up, you are the master of the food, and then we we'll see where this happens. And now, Kunal, your what you would do if you were master of the food? I think I'll try and uh, use my power to make sure that nobody goes. Uh, hungry to sleep. Everybody should have access to good, nutritious food. Everybody. Wow, that's also that's a very different thing. I'm sure you want to say something like that too now, Saranj. No, I. You know, to be able. You to would see... say everybody needs to pay <laughs> for eating food. <laughs> While nobody goes hungry, everybody buys from Goila butter chicken and pays for it. Simple. Yeah. The whole world. I think that's a true cooks or a chefs uh, mark, you know, to think of food from a necessity level and not a luxury level. Yeah. I think you yeah. because we become chefs, we think of food as a luxury. But yeah. uh, if you're really a cook, and then you you learn that from Langar cooks, that um, I once had a very funny instance. Uh, not once, last year I'd gone to Golden Temple, and. I am li li literally a kid in 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 front of a person who cooks a lakh meals per day, and I made a very weird remark, telling him that in our kitchen we only cook like hundred kgs of of butter chicken, and you cook like some thousand kgs of food every day. He's like, your family is small, and our family is big. So uh, the way you look at food and the way we look at food is very very different. Very different. And that's exactly what Chef Kunal is also pointing out that sometimes you just need 
a larger perspective and yeah. food is all about perspective at the end of the day any last thoughts from the two of you that you would like to add to what we have spoken of today i think uh, uh, more or less to the fact that uh, you know um, i come from a time when you know i joined hotel management and thought of becoming a chef and it wasn't really considered as a glamorous job or a job that you could post about or you could talk about in your peer or your friends or your family uh, i think we've come a long way from there um, but i still see a lot of reservation uh especially when it comes to uh, girls or women that not all but most families discourage uh, if it's a girl to join hotel management especially for kitchens and i think we could use a brilliant brilliant talent in kitchens i still see uh, kitchens as a very male dominated uh, mm. career i would love to see some brilliant women of our country to come forward and take the uh you know um, and chart out a new course what has already been done you know it's always been the male thought the men thinking in a very practical uh, way in in the way that what the world or the country would eat they are the ones creating new thing uh, whereas i think there is a whole lot of different perspective that can come from uh, the opposite sex and uh, with uh, with a woman coming in there there has to be a huge change of thought and for me the payoff is not eating some different food the payoff is that uh, there is a sense of equality that comes into my trade my job and that's something which is missing i personally feel wow that's an interesting thought and saranj no i would just um, you know seal it off uh, by saying that uh, um, i think indian food really needs to travel the globe uh, we need many more chefs uh, contributing to the cause um uh, which means that uh, we really have to take our cuisine uh, seriously and uh, that's whole story of atithi devo baba uh, and the fact that we truly believe that guest is god and that we serve the best meals to anybody who comes to our homes or to our restaurants uh, we just need to take that story across the globe and i would encourage all the young ones out there uh, to to take that uh and to use that research and to use the platforms to make indian food proud so that is what i would uh, tell the younger ones wow so we are at the end of this discussion thank you so much saranj and kunal for that very exciting informative and fun exchange of views thank you also for joining us today when i know this is a really busy time of year for you all the very best and so much more power to you in all your endeavors thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you so much see you chef kunal bye